Hey guys, it's Matt here from Crypto Coffee, and today I wanted to make a quick video because big news, as the title of this video would suggest, I have actually deleted the Telegram app off of my personal uh, cellular telephone. And if you want to hear about why that decision was made, it was very personal for me, uh, but stick around till the end of the video and I'll talk more about that. Uh, but first, I wanted to address the other elephant in the room, which everyone seems to be talking about, uh, which is the ETH recycling of the funds in the adoption amplifier. Now, if you don't know what ETH recycling is, it's basically the concept that was uh, very similar to uh, a concept that kind of might have occurred allegedly in the EOS launch, which Richard has talked about many times. And if you go to the Hex AA channel, uh, t.me forward slash Hex AA, and read the pinned little bit about the ETH, I think it's exclamation mark ETH, uh, you should get a combat response explaining all about um, Richard Hart talking about how EOS may or may not have recycled ETH during their launch phase, and there's no way to prove it uh, verifiably, and essentially that there would be no way to prove if um, ETH were to be recycled in the adoption amplifier for Hex as well. Uh, no way to be, no way to prove it, and nothing to stop it from happening. Um, so this kind of ties back to the question of where does the ETH go? And, you know, we've been saying where does the ETH go for, uh, people have been saying where does the ETH go for weeks, right? Or months, really. Um, but I feel like at this point, the whole community is kind of okay with uh, not knowing where the ETH goes. Um, in fact, there's so many memes about it on Telegram and elsewhere that, you know, the real believers in Hex kind of, I, I thought, didn't care where the ETH went uh, until now. Until now. Because uh, apparently... After uh, Nightly Crypto made this video about ETH recycling, uh, people all of a sudden start to care where the ETH went again. So interesting to see that. Um, I don't know what all of you were expecting. Um, <laughs> you know, this is always something that could have happened. And so I don't know why it's so shocking and I don't know why it has to be framed so negatively either. So, you know, I'll touch on all these points that I'm making and I'll try to see it from an objective point of view. Uh, I really just want to address the main source address the main source of the content that is I'm not going to call it FUD, but Richard Hart has called it FUD. Uh, the content that came out from crypto, uh, Nightly Crypto, which was essentially a video that he put out about ETH recycling um, and trying to make it seem like uh, a very big deal, which you know, in his mind, I, I'm sure he believes that it is, and that's okay. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, but after that video that Nightly Crypto put out, there seems to have been a lot of uh, FUD created. Not FUD. I don't. I hate that use of that word. But there seems to be a lot of uncertainty. Um, and you know what? That word is fine because fear, uncertainty, and doubt is exactly what's really happening right now. So I'm actually okay with that word. I've just decided. Um, and the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which is really all it is, is coming from a vocal minority that think that ETH recycling is a bad thing, number one. And number two, it's artily, artificially inflating the price of HEX. So I'll go over a few arguments about, you know, from both sides, both the Richard Hart camp and the Nightly Crypto camp. Um, he's got a smaller Telegram channel that people are kind of uh, talking in, myself included. And, um, you know, people are raising good points in, in both cases and also some not so good points. So I just want to state the facts here and uh, what's actually happening. And just as always, let you make your own decision because, you know, I've again had to grapple with a uh, conflicting st uh, set of facts or really just a conflicting set of uh, stories and narratives and try to analyze the facts for myself, so I want to try to hopefully help you all do that as well. So let's take the Nightly Crypto argument first. Um, again, having known the entire time that where the ETH goes is uh, none of our concern and we cannot possibly know where it will go and we should not be concerned with it, um, Nightly seems to be genuinely concerned that the ETH is being recycled um, into the adoption amplifier, which 
Um, when you look at the facts, and it, it's not, it's not verifiable that it is, but um, it's kind of uh, convincing to me, at least, that ETH may be being recycled. Looking at everything that I've looked at, and I'm not going to do the chain analysis on camera here because it would just take too long. Uh, I think uh, Nightly Crypto actually does a better job of chain analysis, but I think even he kind of just points to a Reddit thread, which does the real chain analysis. So if you're really curious about, you know, trying to figure out where the ETH is going and proving verifiably that it is going into the adoption amplifier again, you can go f check out Nightly's video and then check out that Reddit post as well. Uh, but I'm not going to be linking to that here because it's, it's besides the point. So let's assume, just for the sake of time, I want to make this a short video. Let's assume that ETH uh, is being recycled into the adoption amplifier um, as of the last week or two. And, um, well, basically Nightly is saying that that was the reason for this big price run-up. And that may or may not be true. Um, I think, you know, if you believe that, that the adoption amplifier sets the price of hex for the day, um, then maybe this could be true temporarily. But if you believe that Uniswap is the real market, uh, decision and the market maker for the price of hex, then this, uh, you, you might be convinced to think that this hex rose 8x on its own merit. So we've established a few things. We've established so far that ETH recycling was always an option. Uh, people seem to have come to terms with not knowing where the ETH goes uh, until now, where they are taking a, a stance against ETH recycling. And point number two, again, I'm not for or against this. I just want to spit out all the facts just to kind of clear my own head and hopefully clear yours too. And now that we've established these facts um, or these clauses, the main two arguments that Nightly Crypto uses um, for which... Uh, to try to explain that recycling the ETH is bad is number one, a moral or ethical argument that it is just morally or ethically bad. And number two, that the price of HAX is being artificially propped up by um, adoption amplifier, by ETH being recycled into the adoption amplifier. Now, we were talking about the, we'll get to the moral and ethical stuff in a minute, but uh, we were talking about the potentially propped up price artificially um, and the fact that the price may be um, currently being kind of set by the adoption amplifier per day. Now, in my opinion, this might be true, but only because before, other than the adoption amplifier, there really was no exchange with significant liquidity before Uniswap uh, that you could trade hex on. And so, I can see that argument that the adoption amplifier does set the hex price. Um, and now when did it when did it start setting the hex price? Well, ever since the beginning of the launch, because it was kind of the only place you could buy hex at first. But when does the adoption amplifier stop setting the price for hex? Well, I think that the more liquidity that actual exchanges have, um, I think the the more the tides tend to turn towards uh, well, now the exchanges are, are actually providing the market price and price discovery. So how long that will take, I really don't know how to tell for sure. Uh, but one thing that Nightly Crypto also mentioned in his video, you can go back and reference it. I don't have the chain analysis again here to uh, prove anything. But it was uh, convincing beyond a doubt for me is that a lot of the ETH that is being recycled into the adoption amplifier is being used as liquidity to fund liquidity on Uniswap. Because if you know anything about Uniswap, it's a decentralized exchange that the, part the participants actually um, put up the liquidity for and create their own markets. And so what I think is probably happening here, as being as objective as I can, is that ETH is being recycled so that HEX can come out of the adoption amplifier and go into Uniswap liquidity. And the reason I, behind this, I believe, is because uh, Uniswap is an actual market, whereas the adoption amplifier is kind of like a daily incentivized game. I mean, you can call the adoption amplifier a market, but the price of ETH per hex is only set by the adoption amplifier once per day. So if you want to call the adoption amplifier a market, 
It's kind of like a market with just one data point every day. And that's when the adoption amplifier closed, closes because that's what gives you your price of hex to ETH. So are you following me so far? I hope you are. Um, so rather than having an adoption amplifier price that's set once per day, what I think the anonymous uh, owner of the flush address may be doing by recycling is using some of that hex to fund liquidity on Uniswap and thus lead to more accurate uh, price discovery. Because on Uniswap, uh, anyone can participate. We don't have to worry about guessing whether or not a whale is going to get in at the last minute. And um, now that Uniswap has so much liquidity, it's much easier to just go buy your hex there and not from the adoption amplifier. So if I did want to recommend anybody to buy hex, I would say that hopefully soon, if not already, that the Uniswap exchange, decentralized exchange, has better price discovery because it's a more open market than the adoption amplifier and I would recommend trying to use Uniswap and hopefully other exchanges in the future because I don't think Uniswap is going to be the only one but uh, essentially if I was the anonymous owner um, of the flush address that is what I think that I would be doing right about now now again there's no way to know for sure and we can speculate all we want but you can't have any expectations of work from anybody and all that, blah, blah, blah. I sound like a broken record. Um, but that's kind of my theory. So Hex is essentially being funneled out of the adoption amplifier to fund liquidity on Uniswap. And I guess the to go against Knightley's argument where he thinks that the adoption amplifier sets the price and Uniswap follows, uh, well, that may be what's happening right now. Um, and he might think that because he's actually a trader and he's arbitraging, like he's actually said, he's arbitraging opportunities from AA to Uniswap. And he's um, kind of upset that he's not getting as good of a deal in the adoption amplifier as he was previously. And so he's looking at that and calling it eth unethical, immoral, he even called it stealing, which I, I don't really agree with the word stealing here. Um, because the whole time it was like anybody can do whatever they want. And, uh, you know, ETH could, uh, could have always been recycled and now may be being recycled as well. Um, but yeah, it kind of depends on who you think sets the market. And although the adoption amplifier set the market price and made the market earlier on, I think the goal and what we're trying to see happen right now is for Uniswap to become the new market maker and price discovery provider and I think that the anonymous owner of the flush address thinks that by funding more liquidity for Uniswap um, that that will lead more people to want to trade there rather than risk getting uh, wrecked in the adoption amplifier and so we might see kind of a flip-flopping if you will now to go against the moral and ethical argument um, I, I'm not really taking a moral or ethical stance in this whole thing um, I will pull up the definitions of morality and ethics for you here because it's actually kind of interesting. So ethics uh, tend to come from the rules recognized from a social system, meaning more of the external environment, whereas morals are something that we believe on an individual uh, basis. So morals, morals and ethics both have to do with the idea of right and wrong. The thing is that ethics have to do with what... Uh, the external culture and environment, social system says is right or wrong, and morality is what you believe is right or wrong. Now, we can get into philosophy on this and how ethics influence morality, and can you ever have true morality if your social system has influenced your morality ever since birth, and given all the institutions that you've been in and whatnot. Um, but the thing is, we, we've got this idea of right or wrong, and on a moral level, I guess you're free to think that this is a morally wrong thing to do, but that's just your individual decision. So it's not related to anything objective or true. It's just what you believe to be true. So if you think that this is a morally wrong thing and you believe that to be true, that's totally fine. I am not trying to convince you otherwise. Uh, and if you believe this is externally wrong and bad, um, so therefore ethically bad, you're also free to believe that. Um, 
but I I don't think I can buy into that just because I don't know of I'm not participating in a social system that views this as as ethically bad um, because society says it's the wrong thing to do because it's like which society right are we you know we can be a part of whatever social systems we want and we can opt to choose to be in a social system that does not judge this as a bad thing per se. Um, now, that's a whole philosophical debate for another day. Uh, really, I don't really want to take an ethical or moral uh, horse in this race. I'd rather just kind of uh, keep calm and hex on, if you will. I don't believe that this attempt at providing liquidity to Uniswap uh, should have a moral or ethical overlay imprinted on top of it. But that's just me. And again, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. And I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of nasty, you know, comments and everything um, trying to persuade me one way or another. But, you know, you might be, it might be kind of hard to believe for you, but I really do not have a horse in this race in terms of morality or ethics. So, it's really interesting. I mean, I've got my popcorn ready, and I'm just watching the, the fireworks go off. Uh, Nightly Crypto, obviously, is taking a stance that the ETH is bad, again, for a moral ethical argument, and because he believes that adoption amplifier sets the price. Um, I believe that the adoption amplifier doesn't have to set the price, and that eventually Uniswap can, and I'm choosing not to get morally or ethically involved, although I am making a case that if I wanted to, I could choose to think this is good or bad, based on the social system that I want to be a part of. So try to realize that for yourself too. And now to go to Richard's argument too, which is also not 100%, uh, you know, totally sound either. Uh, well, he, in Telegram, apparently blocked Nightly. Unfortunately, instead of uh, talking it out, maybe they got to a point where Richard thought that it was just impossible to really talk it out with Nightly, uh, and that's why he blocked him. I know he can be a little quick to uh, to judge or to to snap sometimes, which, you know, I'll try to see it in his favor too. I'm sure he gets a lot of hate messages on a regular basis from a lot of people and just kind of wanted to tune out uh, any noise because I, I really do believe that Richard uh, Hart thinks that he is doing something good. And I think that Nightly Crypto genuinely believes that he is onto something that is bad. And both of these people have totally, um, have very uh, thorough arguments as to why they think um, ETH recycling is either good or, or bad, or doesn't matter. I think uh, RH would probably say that ETH recycling just doesn't matter that much. Um, and if anything, that it's, it's good because he's kind of the benevolent uh, person trying to make Hex as good as it can be. That's likely his argument. Um, but then he also shot a few shots at Knightley saying that, uh, well, Knightley is a traitor, right? So uh, he is a traitor and he, he did verifiably sell 170 million Hex uh, at or near the top uh, in terms of price. So I found that very interesting too. Now, Richard claims that Nightly sold 170 million at the top and then went and started fudding about hacks and the Ethereum recycling to drive the price down to buy back cheaper. Now, we know that Nightly said himself that he will be trying to arbitrage opportunities between the adoption amplifier and Uniswap. And I firmly, I, I feel like, just based on my interactions with Nightly, and I, I like both of these guys, so don't get me wrong, I'm not taking a side here. But I know Knightley is a trader, so that much is true. He's got a trader's uh, mindset, trader's mentality. I don't know if he's maliciously trying to FUD just to buy back lower, however. I think that might be um, not totally true. I believe that Knightley really does think that ETH recycling is bad. And I think maybe Richard um, might actually believe that uh, Knightley is just trying to FUD the price down because so many... He's, he's getting this kind of flack on a daily basis of people trying to FUD the price. So it could just look like Knightley is like no different than all these other guys that are just trying to FUD. Um, but I know for a fact also verifiably that, I mean, he's admitted on video that Knightley's got 150 million staked for the long term. 
Uh, but I was surprised to find out that he did sell 170 million almost for trading purposes right around the time that he made that video. So keep, take that with a grain of salt. I don't think that either side is totally right or wrong. And I really think that we're both just kind of, we're all just kind of figuring this out as we go along. So the anonymous owner of the flush address, I believe, thinks that funding liquidity for Uniswap will lead to better price discovery for Hex than the adoption amplifier will. And so that's what he's trying to do now. And I also believe that Knightley, with a trader's mentality, did sell the top after realizing that ETH was being recycled. And I kind of think that he actually does believe that ETH recycling is bad whether or not morally or uh, for the project in general, based on, uh, based on quote-unquote propping up the price. But hey, I think there's, there's flaws in both arguments, and I think that we will see what happens when it comes to the actual price. Uh, I'm trying to, as always, take a positive look at this whole thing because I think that more liquidity on Uniswap would be great. And I think if everybody went over to, liquid, to Uniswap instead of the adoption amplifier, I think that would lead to much better and more accurate price discovery. Whether or not Hex crashes another, you know, 50%, 60%, or whether it starts going back up right now. I think that the important thing is that we have liquidity on exchanges and we can trade peer-to-peer -peer, uh, anonymously uh, through smart contract decks like Uniswap. I think that's great. So I want to see more things like Uniswap coming out, and I want to see more liquidity for Hex. I just thought that I had to kind of jut in and give my take on the whole back and forth between Knightley and Richard, even though Richard hasn't really interacted with Knightley too much, apparently, other than a few um, Telegram messages. And so I've been reading all these Telegram messages on Telegram, and just to get into that point, it is exhausting, man, to keep up with all these arguments and all these... Uh, you know, some people have good arguments, some people have weak arguments. Um, but over the past week, I've realized the amount of tele time that I've spent on Telegram has gone up by like, to like hours per day. And so I actually deleted it off my phone. Uh, and now that was a little bit of a clickbait title because I didn't totally delete Telegram. I'm still hopping on there every once in a while on my computer just to check on my desktop, just to check in on people and give updates on the ad campaign and everything. But, you know, I think the moral of the story here is I am so tired of just reading arguments and watching people argue on Telegram, on Twitter, like whatever. Uh, not to mention my, my job right now is very demanding. So I just can't be dedicating all this focus and energy onto Telegram and things like that and watching people argue online when I have a life, you know, I have stuff that I want to go do and achieve. And so, you know, if anyone out there is feeling stressed out or, you know, you're reading through Telegram and you don't know what to think anymore, maybe just try to take a break from it. Try to get a breath of fresh air, you know, get into a hobby, get into uh, work towards one of your goals or something that you want to achieve. Uh, right now I'm working on this big project. It's like a new uh, voice app that we're making. At my company, so I'm, I'm very into that right now, and I want to see that be a huge success. And so I'm taking a little break from Telegram. Uh, I'm still checking in every once in a while, so you can always hit me up, Crypto Coffee Seven on Telegram. But that is kind of my story, and that's where I'm at with this. And so, you know, this kind of thing is so cyclical in crypto. With every cryptocurrency that I've been a part of, there's always drama, and if you're watching, uh, you can get sucked in. So if you want to get sucked in, that's fine. If you've got nothing better to do, feel free to. But uh, And uh, you can either buy Hex uh, or don't. You know, I'm, I'm kind of done with the arguing and just wanted to look at things objectively. Uh, just as a little exercise that I thought would be fun to do would be to take a look at uh, Bitcoin Talk and take a look at the announcement thread for EOS, which had a very similar launch. Uh, so anybody remember Bitcoin talk? <laughs> yeah, those were the days, right? Uh, so this is the announcement thread for the EOS blockchain, which uh, has launched already, had a very similar launch to Hex. And I just want to take a look at some of the comments. So, um, yes, this is a very confusing ICO, blah, blah, blah. We've got people down here explaining all of the math and the tokenomics behind the EOS launch. 
uh, it almost makes you think about Hex a little bit, right? It's almost reminiscent of the current situation where, you know, Hex is kind of a complex launch. So, you know, we've got somebody over here from July 16th, 2017, explaining how, you know, if you donate more ETH, you'll get a bigger percentage of the EOS that day. For example, I put in two, I get 2,000 EOS. If there were 400 ETH that day, that would have been 43 cents. This kind of conversation is like, what hex would be if it had to if the conversation had to live on a forum so pretty interesting stuff and then we get to some you know i'm looking for scam comments because i'm sure they're uh bountiful here we go i heard that eos is a scam maybe this is the reason haha -ha. so people were calling eos a scam in september 2nd 2017 dun, dun, dun. EOS price is so low these days, you think it's a good idea to buy coins now in order to not regret later if the project turns out to not be a scam. <laughs> kind of sounds like people's attitudes uh, these days. This guy is very sure about himself. EOS is a scam. Made by Chinese scammer Li Zhao Lai. LOL, it is dead now. The price is shitty low. So, so history repeats itself, guys. There will always be people like this. And then the, there's always going to be people like this who say, maybe you're right. Maybe it is a scam. Just bought a small amount in case it's not a scam. Uh, this is almost identical to a lot of the attitudes I see in Hex right now. So it's very, very funny. Yes, yes, yes. You all stupid blaming ES for scam. Missed the train. Da, da, da. And uh, just as a, another point of reference here, I just Googled EOS scam. And I've pulled up an article like this, which came up right away. Uh, it says, there are pieces of evidence that suggest that EOS may not be a blockchain and may be a scam. Although nothing is certain until it's proved outright. Blah, blah, blah. So there have been people yelling scam in the crypto space for years. Uh, this is nothing new. And FUD is really nothing new. So FUD is totally cyclical. Uh, this whole recycling ETH business will... I'm sure passed, and then I'm sure there will be another wave of, uh, of FUD. And something else to, you know, get all riled up about and argue about on Telegram. So, who knows, maybe it would be cool to look up EOS recycling and to just kind of calm your mind a little bit, get a sense of how EOS survived after the ETH was recycled, and it might clear your head and might make you feel better. So, that's all I've got for today, guys. As all, uh, as always, hope the price of hex goes up astronomically, and I hope we all get rich. So stay calm and keep on hexing.